This week on a podcast from Eighth, we're talking with Hannah Fearman. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. The unburied dead are coming back to life, seeking human victims. Hannah, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me on here. Oh, no problem. I'm glad you decided to, or, you know, accepted the invitation to come on here. Well, we'll take all the support we can get. That's right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So the first question you get, this is what all the guests get, is what is your favorite horror movie? Everybody asks me that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh man, I don't know. Okay, there. I don't know. There's too many. There's too many good ones. Um, I mean, Jaws is something I can watch all the time. Um, but let me think. Let me. Okay, I should just be more prepared because it changes. You know. Right. And, yeah. I mean, some people consider like Nightmare Before Christmas a horror themed, and right. I'm just like, oh, I don't think that's what they mean when they're asking me that. Um. Well, so I rewatched Stir of Echoes the other day, and I thought that was pretty great. It's not my favorite, but I really, really appreciate what they did with it. That, um, that, that is a good one. It's an unusual one. It's it's just, I love how you, you go through this journey with Kevin Bacon's character, and you're, you're witnessing all of the, the trippy stuff with him instead of, instead of observing him as much. You're, you're just as confused as he is, and it's pretty fantastic. What a ails. What else? Okay, well, I guess that's a good enough answer right now, isn't it? Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, you'd you, you have to list a bunch of them. Just that one was good enough. So, um, how did you get started in with like acting? Uh, my parents got me into acting. I did a lot of plays when I was really tiny. My mother uh, used to do a lot of theater, and um, and my father is just a natural storyteller, and he does lots of voices and things. So we have a pretty pretty amusing family and um yeah they just got me into it and it it was just kind of natural to me I didn't mind being in front of people um and I just kept doing it I just enjoyed it and then I got into film and that was um of my own accord when I was about 17 I got cast in a feature in a supporting role and I I liked it just as much so I kept doing film and yeah that's it. And then what was it like working on VHS? Working on VHS was, um, was really groundbreaking for me as an artist uh, because I got to develop the character from the grassroots up with David, basically. Um, I mean, after one of the drafts was written, he approached me with it. And, but I got to do all of her movements and I got to do, um, you know, the cadence of her voice. And I, I got to, you know, bring the weirdness. And, um, you know, like implementing my freaky eyes and, and things like that. And just the way she walked. And uh, and also just like, you would just be like, hey, what do you think about these contact lenses I got? And I'd be like, I, I don't need those. Right. And, <laughs> and they're uncomfortable anyway, so next. And yeah, so it was just like a really wonderful process. That's why I like indies so much is because like you have, you have a bit more artistic say you know, it's not, you're, you're not the end all be all, but like, you know, you have, you have input that's listened to if, if it's, uh, you know, if you're working with, with a good director like David is. And uh, I just want to say he's got this movie out, Night House just came out. Um, and I'm going to go see it tomorrow. I'm super excited. So you guys go support that. He, oh. uh, he worked really hard on that. What was it called again? Night House. Night House. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is it, just, it, is it going to be in just theaters? Is it going to be on streaming anywhere? I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be, actually, I don't remember. I think, I get them confused. I think VHS 4 is about to come out, come out in October, and that one's on Shutter. And I think The Night House is in theaters, and then eventually it will be on probably all the platforms, I'd imagine. Oh, okay. So um, out of all the, I was looking at your your list of credits here, 53 acting credits. What, what was your favorite 
Really? 53? That's what it says what it has listed on IMDb. That that's could kinda, be wrong. I don't know. I don't know if that's accurate, <laughs> actually. Like, because a lot of my movies are not on there. And then a couple of them, like, The Goose That Laid a Golden Egg, I'm just like, I, I don't know where that came from, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in that movie. I don't know. Um, yeah. And then, and then people will like change the names overseas. So I'll be doing an over, overseas interview and they'll be like, and you were in this movie. And I'm like, was I, <laughs> what, what did I do? Cause I don't know what you're talking about. And then, you know, little cameos and stuff, but wow, 53. So what was your question? I got distracted by the number. I didn't actually know that. Of your, whatever the true number is, what was your favorite experience you know, uh, working on? Um, my favorite experiences were, creep show working with greg nicotero and um and uh toast of london working with matt berry and alan ford and robert bathurst on uh, on that tv show toast of london it was it was just a, a really good time in my life and um they <clears throat> matt wrote the role for me and and just you know flew me to london and i got i just got this email and it was just like hi oh, i'm the casting director i'm, I'm from I'm from the UK. You probably haven't heard of this project. And uh, this guy saw VHS and wrote a role for you and check it out. And I was just like, oh, you're fucking with me. Who's fucking with me? One of my friends just <laughs> sent me this email. Now, this is the casting director from London. <laughs> no, he's like straight to my Gmail, you know. <laughs> and, um, and, but, it, but it was. And uh, I, I went out there and, um, and uh, yeah, he'd seen VHS and he wanted me to play um, an English rose that had an allergy that manifested as a possession. So I got to do like this caught me demon possession accent. And then I also got to do regular English, uh, like BBC Oxford, more Oxford Brit. And uh, I love doing accents. So that was fun, but it was also fun to just be like brought to London and, and, um, and the role was just so funny. And then I just got afterward, I was like, hey, can you extend my flight? I want to go visit my family because I got a family in Bath. And um, so, yeah, it was just a really wonderful experience for me. Yeah, that and, must be cool. And, and that, that's, se- is that, that's the season three, correct? Of Creep Show that you're on? Oh, no, that was Toast of London, what I was talking about. That's Channel 4. Um, and right, I think but, you, but, you, but, you, but you'd mentioned Creep Show. That's what I was saying. Yeah, was, yeah. You're, you're in season three. Two and three two and three okay mm-hmm. yeah and I think that might be kind of unusual because they don't usually let you do multiple characters in like a, a series like this because they're not connected so they're all different characters but they put me in too so I was really excited about that um but I just really enjoyed that I think it was because I was coming out of COVID land and um, I wasn't really expecting it and they just they emailed me and they were just like well the casting director emailed me and he was just like hey Greg Nicotero wants to give you this role and I was just like what <laughs> <laughs> and they were like yeah you don't have to audition he just wants you to play the Baroness in in the finale of season two and I was just like Greg Nicotero knows who I am <laughs> are you fucking serious and um, they were like yeah do you want to do it I'm like yes absolutely I want to do it and um and then I show up uh, I'm showing up for a fitting and I'm I'm looking like like crap you know I mean my my roots are out to here I don't don't know I've I've been you know isolation and uh and I show up and I think I'm just going to be there for a fitting and then and then a whole bunch of my friends see that I was on the call sheet somehow I, I didn't realize for a fitting you would be on the call sheet actually I'm not kind of unusual anyway so like I show up and a whole bunch of my friends are there and they all came out to greet me you know because they're so excited to see other humans too and I wasn't expecting it. and I'm just like oh Sue Hyla you know Mark Ashworth everybody oh my gosh you know and uh, you know the stunt team and it was just it was just so lovely and then Greg's like oh yeah come here I want to show you something so we end up like watching all this footage and he's showing me all these ideas that he has and I was just like completely blown away from the jump and then I go actually to the fitting and they are actually tailor making all of these amazing wardrobe for me and and they're beautiful and it was just such a fantastic experience from the very very beginning and everybody I worked with was incredibly talented 
and incredibly charming and nice. So like from the actors to the stunt team who already, already knew and the makeup and the hair and it, it was just such a pleasant experience. And, right. and then I did season three and it was, and it was just as much fun. <laughs> yeah, I bet it is. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned that you were, you know, they were like, well, you don't have to audition. Do you, do you normally audition for a lot of roles? Like, like, do you, do you yeah. just go out and do you just go out like, oh, here's a role and they go, or do you wait for somebody to contact you first? Or are you, are you like seeking the role? Honestly, most of the time I'm offered the role, okay. but they're not usually from Greg Nicotero, uh, right, for yeah. Creek <laughs> you know, they're yeah. for like an indie that they're like, oh, I saw your work and I wanted to know if you wanted to, you know, read the script and see if you like it. And um, so usually it's like that, but the usual, the actual normal route for, you know, for acting is you audition, especially if you haven't worked with these people or, you know, just, I don't know. Yeah. Usually it's auditioning. Right. Yeah. I mean, do you like, do you like auditioning or anything you don't like about it or. It depends. It depends on if it's a really well-written sides and, and if the character is fitting for me, because it's kind of frustrating to audition for a role that you know, you're you know, you're not the best for. It's just like, yeah, they probably should cast somebody a little more butch for this. That's right. that's how I'd cast it, you know. And or I don't know. I don't think my purple hair is gonna work. I guess they'll put <laughs> me in a wig. That's fine. They could put me in a wig. Or you know, or if it's just somebody who's super white bread, I don't get cast as a white bread, you know. And it's right. just like somebody else is gonna play this mom much more momish than I would be playing it. And um, not that I can't do it. And I have played a mother several, like two or three times, but let's face it, <laughs> I'm not really the, <laughs> the mommy role. I'm more of the sociopath or ethereal creature from who knows where. Um, but anyway, yeah. So did that answer your question? I'm sorry it's so noisy here. Oh, no, you <laughs> know, it's fine. I can fix it all in post. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so I think the, I, I haven't watched the, I've only watched the first season of Creep Show. But so I think the only thing I've seen you in is the VHS and you were just spectacular in that. Oh, that was like, you. that was like one of my favorite segments of that whole, of the whole thing there. Thank you so much. It's mine too. Yep. So yeah. how did you uh, get involved with the events surrounding a peeping Tom? Well, I've worked with Damien Maffei and Phyllis Rose um, on three features now, and this will be our fourth. And uh, yeah, I was I was her lead actor in this movie we did back in September called Terror Trips, and um, and Damien was in it. And um, and I've known Damien for I don't know maybe fifteen years because we were cast in a feature or fourteen. I don't. Uh, we were cast in a feature back in like two thousand and seven together, and he was playing the protagonist, and I was playing the the antagonist and he uh it didn't actually end up getting made but we stayed in touch because he's i i just really like i really wanted to support him as an artist because he's just a fantastic actor i mean he's amazing and so, um and he he tried to get me in all of his features too and so uh we worked together and it just it was a good fit and we just enjoyed one another and then um we just wanted to keep working together and we brought other people along the ride with us you know like um, so they, they offered me, uh, the job as director. Um, they'd seen a segment for dead by midnight too, that I wrote and directed. Um, I wrote, I wrote it along with Josh Wilcox and, um, and directed, and they were just like, Hey, let's, let's give Hannah the script to see, you know, let's see if she wants to do it. And of course I did. And, uh, that was it. They just asked me and evidently they didn't ask anybody else, which was really flattering. And, and, you know, just like really empowering and uplifting for me you know it just makes me feel like all oh, these people have such such confidence me in me as an artist and it just it just means the world you know and it, especially after you know so much suffering and, and sadness in the world and it's just, you know you're not working that much and it's just like oh wow you guys believe in me that's amazing thank you <laughs> what was it about the script that you found interesting and then like what was your what was your ideas about what you could bring to it well, I, it's a very unusual script, um, and I liked the psychological horror aspect of it. The, I mean, there's it just really keeps you guessing. You don't know, 
you don't know what to expect really you know you think you do and then you don't and um it's just extremely well written I like the characters a great deal and um I really enjoyed the idea of Damien playing my lead peeping Tom Martin because uh well because I think he's very talented but also because I think he really has the look for the role and it would it's just like a perfect fit and uh, Felissa is going to be in it as well Felissa Rose um and she's perfect for her role too and it just like all came together and um so oh and, and Kate Kiddo is going to be playing um the love interest Rowan and she's she's perfect for it like I, I it, you know it was just all there and they were like oh by the way if you want to direct it you got to work with these people again and I was just like absolutely I would have hired <laughs> them anyway you know so yeah it was just it was just a no-brainer yeah so what what do you think what are, what are your ideas that you're going to bring to it as far as you know in the directing role well I um I'm really leaning into the whole peeping element. Okay, so my peeping Tom is peeping on people, obviously, but he's also being peeped on by a sinister, sinister force. And um, so it's sort of like we're the voyeurs, watching the voyeurs watch the voyeur. And you don't know who's, who's worse. Um, and it's just, it, it's just so much fun with camera angles and things that you can do like pov you can do there's there's you know a little out of body there's you know i'm going to be using drones and jibs and all sorts of fun stuff and you know there's a lot of fly on the wall there's a lot of bird birds eye, you know um so i i got to get really creative with that with my with my dp jen osada and um he's got some great ideas too he's brought some really great ideas to the table and you know just like putting a lamp in the foreground so it kind of looks like the people like right. these are ideas we have and it's just like that make you feel like a voyeur and, and that's some that you're watching somebody that you're in it and um and you're also experiencing it like stir of echoes you're experiencing it along with martin so the confusion is there and there's a lot of swooping shots to kind of put you off kilter and and make you feel like you're a little off balance just like martin's character is sometimes within the feature and so that's what I'm bringing. Um, I'm also, you know, I'm an actor, so I, I know what it's like to work on these kind of indie movies as an actor. I, I mean, it's mostly what I do. So I feel like that's a strength as well. And um, also just because I've already worked with these people so many times. And so I know a lot of what their strengths are. And um, and what their weaknesses are, quite frankly, and what to expect and how to how to navigate that. I certainly don't know everything about every single one of them um, artistically, but I got a better idea than if I was just a director for hire that came in green. Right. Yeah. Now, will you yeah. will you allow the actors and actresses to um, bring whatever they want to the character or are you going to try to stick mainly to what was written in the script? Oh, well, the script is very very good so i'm going to stick with it um but i just tend to if i if you're cast it's because i trust you i'm not going to work with you if i don't trust you so i want to see what you bring first and if it needs tweaking it needs tweaking um but these guys are such professionals that usually they come into it knowing the character better than i do because that's that's their one job right. you know and um you know, they're, they're generally, uh, as an actor, you're generally more focused on, on just your character versus directors looking at everything all the time. And so, yeah, if it needs tweaking, I'll definitely be like, yeah, maybe you're at a 10, I need you at a two. But um, I, I really don't think that there's going to be a whole lot of that just because I know, I know my cast so well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Other, other guests that we've had on here, directors and actors uh they've always talked about working when they work on an independent film it's they they they're they feel like they're working more with like a family or in a group of people because they're and everybody has to chip in or is that what you is that your experiences with working on independence like you may have to do other roles and have the actors yeah. just chip in and do other stuff yeah absolutely um you know we're probably gonna have my lead actress be covid compliance officer she's done it before on the past like a couple of features that we were on and she was great about it and nobody got COVID and it was awesome. And, um, you know, yeah, I mean, you don't, 
it's not like with union shoots, big union shoots, where if you do somebody else's job, even a tiny bit, even if you just like reset your, your prop, because you're sitting right there and it's in your hands, literally, sometimes they get mad if, if you put it back. Right. And that makes sense because it might not be in the exact position, you know, and, and that's their job. And they're just like, hey, don't do my job, even though it makes so much sense for you to just put your prop back. Um, you just don't touch right. other people's stuff, you know, but like, yeah, on indies, if somebody's carrying a big, heavy box, um, that's actually how I made one of my best friends um, in the world, Leanna Fugate. She, um, she was helping out in art department on The Unwanted. And she's like a, she's a little woman. She's about my size. Actually, we're exact same height. And uh, she was carrying just like this load that she looked like a tiny ant, like dragging <laughs> a bumblebee. Like it was, it was kind of comical. And I was just like, can I help you? You know? And she's like, sure. And so we were carrying this giant thing and the producers bust out of nowhere. And they're just like, no, you're the talent. Put that down. What are you doing? I'm like, I'm not going to hurt myself. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do it anyway. And, um, and then we just became super good friends after that. And, uh, and I'm still good friends with producers as well. They're wonderful. And, um, you know, yeah, you carry sandbags, you know, you help, you help out. You do, you know, like it, it wasn't really my job to, to organize podcasts for the Indiegogo, but of course I'm going to do it because I want to see it happen. You know, everybody, everybody pitches in. Now, speaking of the Indiegogo, you are what, uh, 34% funded right now, I think. I think that's said? about right. Yeah. 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 It, it's exciting. Um, well, it's, it's no. 34% of it has been raised by the Indiegogo. Right. Yeah. We have, we have out external investors as well. Um, so we don't just have the amount on the Indiegogo. Uh, that would be impossible to make a feature on that. Um, right. Unless it, unless it just skyrockets after this, you know, amazing podcast. But, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's, that's not all. That's not all that we have, but we do still need, I mean, a, a chunk more. We really do to make it good. Like we, we want to do this properly. We want to pay people well and, you know, not eat iceberg lettuce right. with no dressing um, <laughs> or ramen noodles for a pizza. For, you know, we're not going to do that. So, um, I mean, we're not being decadent by any stretch, uh, but we, yeah, we want to do it properly. So is the, um, you said you have outside investors, is the Indiegogo just for, because I know a lot of people are like, well, we're just going to use the Indiegogo for, we want really good special effects or we want really good, you got, is there just certain plans with that money or? It's, I mean, it, it, just it chip, all, just all going together. Yeah. I mean, we have the, we have it planned out, um, but yeah, it's just going to go into the already formulated, you know categories and and just just go into the the one giant pot and we're going to split it up um as needed actually right now i have such a wonderful producer dan john and he's um he's gotten so many locations in new haven for free it is mind-boggling the guy is a machine he just works 24 7 and he just like makes all these friends and he's super nice people people are just you know really drawn to him because he's so nice and so excited about the project very passionate and um, so he's got us a whole bunch of locations for free that we didn't, we did not anticipate, which is amazing. Um, but even still, we still actually do need more money from the Indiegogo, like not a huge chunk, but I mean, a huge chunk for me yeah. individually, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd be like, no, that's all my money, y'all. Um, yeah. So did that answer your question? Yeah. I mean, you've got, you should, you should be fine. You've got some really good perks on here. You've got the, you know, you've got the typical social media shout out and DVDs and Blu-rays, but then I've noticed you've got, um, where you can get an autographed movie of your choice for $60 and you've got, uh, like VHS on here, Sleepaway Camp, obviously. So that's a pretty unique, uh, perk that I've never seen on any other campaign. Yeah, there's some weird ones. So yeah, we got creative with it. I I was, <laughs> yeah, I thought, I, while I was scrolling through real, real fast, I thought I saw a Felissa Rose, is it an action figure or a clay figure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, isn't that cool? And that was from her personal collection. Like, she did not have to give that to us. And oh, really? Like she, really? she gave that? Yeah, really generous of her. Like, 
I, I think there was only a hundred made and it's just like, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You got some really good perks on here. Um, I don't think you'll have any problem hitting your goal and then I guess you're planning on doing the stretch goals and all that if you get to it. I think that we are going to expand um, because we have like two days left on it and we definitely need more than, than we think we, we might accrue in the next two days unless people are just in, laying in wait till the very last minute, but probably not. So we're probably going to extend it a little bit. We had problems um, on Facebook and possibly other social medias where um, people just simply were not seeing our posts about the Indiegogo. And we have some theories on that, but one of them is that peeping Tom is a trigger um, because it's sexual in nature, even right. though I think it's quite a little more on the innocent side of sexual predator, but yeah. So we've, I think we were flagged because of that. And so they would post on our profiles, but nobody would see them. And I got like, I got frustrated because all of my investors were coming from um, strangers. And I've, I know a lot of people that are really supportive of friends of mine that are really supportive of my work and, and that I've helped with their Indiegogo's and, and, you know, media campaigns. And, you know, I AD'd, I second AD'd, you know, for a buddy on his, and I'm just like, why aren't you supporting me, brother? And he's like, <laughs> I didn't see it, Hannah, I swear. And then, so I posted this, like, I was like, guys, where are you? You know, and they're like, we swear we did not see it. This just did not show up. So we figured out that we were being buried. And so, but this was like on the fourth, you know, we had four days to go on it. And so the extension just makes sense. So I think that's, I think that's what we're doing. And I don't really know how many days we're going to extend it. Um, but yeah, that's what happened. It's a shame. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. Until I think someone that I followed had commented on it and then that's when it showed up my feed. And then that's when I got a hold of you to see if you want to come on here. Yeah. But I watched the, uh, the little trailer you have one in it looks really interesting it looks really good i'm pretty excited to see this one it's a very Thank like you. unique story i would say it really is yeah it's hard to put in a category but psychological horror is exactly what it is but it's it's more than that as well yeah look it looks really good i'm pretty excited to see it um so do you want to give some information here where everybody can go and get uh find all the information about the film yeah, you can go to Indiegogo and look up the events surrounding a peeping Tom, or you can go on my Facebook and look at any of the bazillion things that I posted. And there's going to be a link in there somewhere, maybe just in the, in the comments, because that doesn't get flagged. But um, also my Instagram, Hannah Fearman, it's right there in my bio. Um, but yeah, if you just go to the Indiegogo site and you just put in the title, you'll find it. And you can scroll through all the perks and then figure out which one that you think is, is your cup of tea. Cause there's so many on there. Yeah. There was that, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is, you're going to like something. And you know, we've got some really, really interesting ones. Like you could be an intern. You could be, you could be PA for a day. You could, uh, you could have a zoom chat with Felicity Rose or Damien Maffei. You could do a scene, you know, with several of the, of the actors. And it's just like, you know, most Indiegogos do not, really embrace um the the actual movie the community part. yeah the community, yeah. yeah but it's just like hey get involved and we've made the best friends that way like one of our producers or several of our producers that we worked on on time's up which is this feature slasher that was entirely funded by an indiegogo um we did that back in december and january and um you know we got we got these producers via their their campaign and we're working with them again now because they were so cool. And we're just like, oh yeah, all right. Yeah, you're fantastic. No, please come, please come back on and, and help us with this one as well. Yeah, and of course, if, if anybody sees your post or anything like that, make sure they are sharing it. You please have to, share. You have to share. That's the most important part of Facebook is share. You can't just like it. You actually have to share it, people. <laughs> to get please, please so share other people, So other people get it. And of course, you know, go to check out their Indiegogo. Like I said, there's some really good uh, probably won't have to do a little bit of shopping when we get done here and uh, <laughs> find me a perk that I want to get. I, I, I usually get the Blu-rays or the DVDs. 
Oh, those are great. Just so I yeah. have like the because I because you're gonna want one. I'm anyway. big for phys- yeah. I'm big. I'm big on physical copies of. Uh, and you might as well get like. it because they're gonna be signed too. You know. Oh, also so. the, yeah. They're gonna be. Are they gonna be just like cast and crew or? Um, I'm assuming everybody who is in the movie. Okay. Well, I've gotten I've gotten some before, and it's like the entire cover is just nothing. You can't even see the cover anymore because <laughs> it's just autographs over top of autographs. <laughs> well, <laughs> where they, where they mean, just get everybody to sign it. No, it would probably just be the leads because it. Okay. That would be a full time job for somebody. Yeah. To round up all of the the day, you know, the day players or whatever, to, you know, the extras or whatever. That would be no. That would be too much trouble. Probably just be like me, Damian, Phyllis, and. Okay. That's, and Kate Kiddo, yeah. Yeah, that, that's definitely cool. Um, oh, and, and 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 Terry. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot that because he was not on this original cast list. It's on down here where you no, got the, he, his he, big he, picture. He <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's pretty cool, too. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I watched the, your, uh, what's it? I don't, I don't want to say trailer because it's your uh, no, treatment. No, it's a teaser. It's a treatment it's a, yeah. teaser, it's yeah. A, it's a um, proof of concept. Um yeah yeah and thank you and thank you for checking that out oh yeah it looks really interesting like i said i'm pretty excited for it uh do you know when like when do you think it'll be released or no idea you don't you don't have like a you're not you're not shooting for a certain date right now Mm-mm. No. okay that's too early oh yeah mm-hmm. all right well um again thanks for joining me on here and i'll put all the links to everything and in, in the show notes of, of this episode, I'll let you know when it's coming out. Uh, Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, hopefully, uh, when you get closer to it coming out, you can come back and uh, we can talk about it after er, after everybody's seen it. Yeah. Good idea. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. And yeah, just please tag me in it and I'll share it. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining me. All right. Bye.